Yeah, I guess so. That would seem smart. Hey. Another try. Yes. And let's see what I can find on my profile. My channel. Live events. Europe, take three. And the YouTube. Ta da! Hey, we're live. Okay. Next try. Yeah, so you play music again? I will ask Sean Paul to join, so let's get to fix that. See what I can find on my profile. My channel. Okay. Then we're good to go, and then I would use this YouTube link now to send out the email to the participants. Yay! Right, okay. Going out in one second. We should get some sort of video conferencing, enterprise video conferencing company to sponsor this. Mm hmm. <coughs> I know one or two that might. There's a group called Enterprise Hangouts that does an enterprise layer on top of this. Oh, that'd be fantastic. We should totally get them involved. This, this is just not quite. It's a little bit. I mean, it's fantastic for a free service, but uh, scaling to hundreds of people. Uh, wow, 23 lines of questions from SimSuit. Hello, Sim. Sorry, but we got to use a different. Oh, is there uh, more questions on that other feed? I answered the only one that was there when I was there. Yeah, there's a seven questions by Sim. If you wanna, if you wanna answer that also, that'd be cool. Sure. I just gotta find the old, uh, the old feed. I got a message now that this video is private. No more access to that page. Which yeah. one's private? The old one. The okay. old one. Well, that's not great because you needed to tell people, hey, use the new one. Yeah, I should uh, put a comment there. So Danny G is asking, can we create a ca well? So there's lots of questions now on the new one, a lot. Good. <laughs> She's great. Um, Jason, do you want to do you want to redo your overview of the tool? You want to do it now? Yeah. It, you think we have enough people watching now? Yes. Okay. Welcome. Uh, my name is Jason Kuchu. I'm head of testing for Vendasta Software. Um, this is one of our products. This is our sales tool. It creates demo accounts for one of our other products called Reputation Intelligence. Um, it, once you log in, you will see a screen somewhat like this. It won't have four companies already created in, in it um, uh, or accounts in it. Um, those are added by going to the Create Account screen, which is up here in the top Sorry, i got to find my mouse up here on the top right. Uh, clicking Create Account will give you a chance to create an account. Um, unfortunately, I don't have, this is our demo server, so it doesn't have a full set of countries that we can create accounts for. 
Uh, you might have to go searching for real companies. Once you enter their phone number or um, their business name and postal code, it will search for you. Um, I have a phone number handy. Uh, of course, it's going to be slow. There we go. Um, it didn't find anybody with that phone number I used, uh, so it's given me a blank form to fill in. If it does find a company, it'll fill in a large number of these fields for you. Um, of course, the red star means it's a required field. No red star means it's optional. The more information that you fill in, except for this section about contact person, um, the more uh, accurate. You want, to try, you, want to try, you want to try the phone number for Exelon Development? Sure. Throw it at me. 269? 269. 355? 355. 3513. 3513. 269-355-3513. Yep. Uh, didn't find it? It didn't find it. I happen to know that we use Google as a backing service to oh, search okay. these phone numbers. So if you don't have a if Google if you can't be found by searching for that phone number on Google, we won't find you. We have some more service providers in the pipe, but they haven't been implemented yet. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking you pick it up from Foursquare, where I know I know it's registered. Yeah. Uh, that being said, I could probably go down here and do Excel on. And what's your zip code? Uh, four nine zero one zero. Four nine zero one zero. Yeah, there we go. Um, you're probably the bottom one. No, neither of those. Excellent. I mean, you're not a beauty salon. We're pointing. <laughs> yes. Not a, we're not a beauty salon. Fun. Develop. No. No, can't find you. Oh, man, um, we are not social enough. Yeah, that being said, in this particular case, I could m then manually enter all of this information. Sure. Um, I remembered why I didn't find that phone number that I used because it's Canadian. It's for Chris Ezeal Secondo Back Bakery. It uh, set all this information up for me. I already, I've already created this account, so I'm not actually hit submit. Uh, once an account is created, it takes about 10 minutes to create this snapshot report. Um, and there's two, uh, as a user, as a admin, you guys are, be, the role that you're playing in this test is as a, a salesperson. You're trying to sell the Repint product to uh, the business, so you've created this snapshot report. Um, so your first access to the snapshot report is in an editing mode. Uh, once it loads here, we'll see that. Um, um, you're given all the various sections. All the sections have a green check mark on them. That green check mark is whether or not that section of the report is going to be included uh, in the uh, sorry included in the final report. Uh, there's a view report link here that lets you go view the report as if the customer would, and a button where you can email the report to that customer. Um, it's a pretty simple tool. Some of the complexity, a lot of the complexity comes in from whether or not sections get included, whether or not we say they get included, how we calculate these scorings, um, what we determine should be displayed as displayed, um, and we're really concerned that salespeople need to be able to use this tool from login all the way through emailing the report to their client from mobile devices. Our research shows that these sal the salespeople that we're trying to engage work primarily off iPads, uh, full-size iPads and iPad minis, uh, and some even off their iPhones um, or Android equivalents thereof. And so we're, one of the things we're concerned about is whether or not we've got the responsive design working well enough that we can, they can interact with the product sufficiently.
So, so we uh, um, earlier in the previous broadcast, you described some th some part of the application is out of scope. What was that? What was that okay. Again? So this is this tool is all about the snapshot report. This purple star here is the actual product um, that we are creating the demo for. And it's a great source for you to go to be an oracle for whether or not the data shown in the snapshot report is actually the data that we gathered for them. So this is the reputation account for the business we just looked at the snapshot report for. You'll notice that the URL now says step rep demo instead of sales tool. And this is the in-depth product that's trying to be sold with that sales tool. So we need them to be very consistent. So feel free to go here and check the answers that are here. But testing while you're on step rep demo is out of scope. Mm -hmm. um, A um, couple other things that are out of scope, explicitly out of scope, I'm going to say it even though I know it was in bold and red in your email, is if you intentionally load test our application, I will send you a bill. Um, we live on the Google App Engine infrastructure. It may be a bit sluggish every now and then when it gets hit with a thousand people trying to create new accounts all of a sudden, but it's going to spin up new instances and get real snappy and it will just survive. So extra load testing just costs me more money. It doesn't test my application, it tests the Google uh, App Engine infrastructure. Um, likewise, right. security testing. We use, most of our security is uh, provided to us by Google, so feel free to security t do security testing if that's your Balawick, but it's really low priority for me, and if you trip uh, the intrusion detection that's set up by Google, that's your problem, not mine. So I don't recommend it. Um, anything else I needed to cover before I start answering questions, Matt? Uh, I think that's a fine introduction. Um, you mentioned that <clears throat> primarily we're trying to sell to sales forces that use uh, iPads and other mobile devices. So what about like Galaxy Notebook kind of... Um, Android tablets, also in scope for testing, if they've got them? If you, if you got them, use them. Um, mostly I'm interested in, in as large a variety of different screen sizes and resolutions um, to make sure that it's usable on the large number of devices possible. So, so, so iPods, I, iPhones, uh, Android phones, uh, Blackberries that are new and we think should work, all those sorts of things. Probably if you have less than a four inch screen, your experience is going to be suboptimal. Um, but anything over a four inch screen, if uh, the experience is frustrating, that's definitely something to record. Okay. So um, we've got some, some people here that can't log in. Um, I told them to reach out to me on Twitter. And mm -hmm. someone else, there's another guy that, um, yeah, so I don't know if you can <coughs> scroll down, um, Jason. I'm, I'm going to put one of, the, one of the email addresses in, in, the, in the Hangout chat for our private chat. Yeah. Um, and someone else said they can now get in. I've got 23 lines of questions from Sim Hutrop. Um, and somebody else uh, couldn't get in. I do not have the YouTube window open, so if you guys could either put them in our chat or I'll somebody with, ask them to me, that would be great. Let's start with Sim's questions, and I can talk them, and then I can also type them in. Please explain in more detail the main purpose of the product. I believe I covered that. This question was asked before I did the overview. Okay. Who are the customers that matter the most to you? Um, we sell, pro this particular product is, is sold to companies that already have a sales force selling other digital products. So advertising agencies uh, are a prime target, um, as are newspapers, yellow page companies, um, marketing executive, not marketing, marketing companies. Um, so we're a white label provider. Uh, we don't sell this product directly to customers. 
uh, to end users. We sell it to companies who resell it for us. This particular tool is for the people who are going to be going out on the street to actually sell to end users. Um, what was question three there? I can't quite see it. Um, sorry, I'm typing at the same time. Yeah. Are there any other development documents available to us? Specifications, user stories, glossary, help, homepage, or other kinds of materials? Um, our company is Vendasa.com. Uh, you Rob, you can find out a lot about us and what we do and the purpose of the product that's trying to be sold using um, using sales tool there. Um, we, we're in the reputation management space. We try to help small businesses uh, know what's being said about them online and engage their online audience. Um, as opposed to explicit documentation, none that I'm willing to share. Um, um, are there any other functions to help test the software, such as diagnostics, log files, test menus, etc.? Um, not log. It, this is web software, so I have access to the logs, but out of good thinking, I'm not about to let uh, a thousand people that I don't know have access to my production server to look at the logs. Um, if there's something explicit where you really think a log would help your bug report, um, feel free to um, chat Matt and he'll pass on the request to me and if I agree I'll look up the logs. Matt, why did you go green? Um, I'll, I'll look up the logs and pass them on to you. Why did I go green? Yeah, your screen went green for a second. It was weird. Okay, I don't know. It's not, I'm busy typing away while you while you talk. So yeah, um, does the product depends on any external hardware or software that's not part of the demo environment, but is required in order for the software to work? That's but, actually a really good question. I like that one. Um, this product is one of a series of nine products that are part of our full suite. It will be interacting with reputation intelligence. Uh, Vendasta Business Center and Vendasta Core Services all in the background, but that should already be set up and working. Um, and so some of those, like I already showed you, I already showed you Reputation Intelligence. It, you've got a link into it. Um, it. It's up and working. It's out of scope for testing, but it's in scope as an oracle for the data. Um, same with Vendasta Business Center. Uh, you will, so at some point, in your testing, undoubtedly trip over a link that takes you into a Midnast Business Center. Again, we need to make sure that that link works, but the act, once you're actually into Business Center, we're up, that's out of scope for this. Um, I think I see question six on my screen. What are, what, what in my opinion, is the most unique aspects of this software that set it apart from similar products? Um, well, there aren't really similar products, but the unique aspects of our suite of, of, pro, of programs um, is that we specialize in small and medium business. It's our competitive advantage. Uh, there's lots of people doing reputation management out there for large brands and large companies, um, but we do it on the small scale for the small business. So let me ask you, um, and this is kind of a ridiculous question, but... If the, the co teams want to do research with a company like Radian 6 and can pretend that was sort of a, what's the phrase, a uh, equivalent product um, uh, oracle, would that make any sense at all? Um, it, it could. Um, a for some of our other products, for this particular product, um, because it's aimed at the salesperson as opposed to the small business user, user to help the salesperson sell the product, um, it wouldn't be that helpful in this particular case. Okay, great. And Ken, 
could we benefit from any specific equipment or tools to test the environment which are available to us? I would think that, you know, if you don't have an iPad, you might try an iPad emulator. Yeah. Uh, anything, anything that's going to allow you to uh, exercise the responsive design. Um, if you have access to uh, tools that test how emails look on different uh, email, rendering email rendering systems, um, that might be useful. We use Litmus, which is an online service uh, when we develop the email that gets sent out. Um, so there's, there's one or two email clients that I know the email looks dumb on. Um, <laughs> um, like so is Litmus, is Litmus, a, Litmus is a test for email? I've yeah. heard of this. Yeah, Litmus uh, is a service. Once you subscribe to it, you can uh, they give you a specialized email address to send your emails to, and then they'll they'll forward that email on to, I think it's about 40 or 50 different email clients, and then take pictures of it for you so that you can see what your email looks like rendered by that client. Okay. okay. That's cool. I did not know that. All right. So I think that's all seven questions. I'm going to click the reply button, and then that should get some, a lot of answers. Um, I assume your company is DDA compliant. Any focus on this? No idea what DDA means. I believe that's probably Disabilities Act. Um, I will answer the question as if uh, it was. And whoever used the acronym can fill us in on what the acronym actually is. Um, it's probably a European equivalent of the ADA Act. Right. Um, Americans with Disability Act, Disabilities Act. Um, we haven't done specific testing against uh, the Disabilities Act. Uh, we use raw text. Um, all of our images have alt text behind them, so it should be screen reader compliant. Um, I use a lot of Selenium in our in our testing, so most things have usable IDs. Um, on that, I'm without getting a better definition of what whatever that acronym compliant is. Right. Um, I'm, I'm not sure. Um, we're just now starting to look at the European market. We've been looking at Britain um, and other English speaking areas in Europe. Um, we haven't done any translation efforts yet. So uh, we're currently available in New Zealand, Australia, South Africa, Canada, the United States, English, Mexico, um, and we're doing evaluations in several companies in Europe, several areas in Europe, including Britain and German, but German in English. I was trying to read it. Is there a browser for which the design of the app is considered optimal? Um, yes, but only because all of our devs love Chrome. Um, uh, it's rare to find a browser-based issue on Chrome. If you're on IE, we should have most of it covered. If you're on IE 8, I, I cry for you. Mm ask you to upgrade. Um, you will find issues and I will probably refuse to fix them. <laughs> uh, um, but uh, yeah, if according to IITC your browser has more than 3% market share, we probably support it at some level. Uh, if you have more than 7% market share, I think it is, we support full functionality. Guys, we have uh, two or three more account log to the SUT. I post the emails in the Hangout chat. 3%. Jason, do you mean like IE or do you mean IE 11, 10, 9? IE right? 11, 9, yeah. For, but uh, I mean, are, are we, so let's say the IE family of browsers has, I don't know, 25% market share, right? Uh, mm -hmm. But IE8 only has 2%. Do you, 
are you how thin are you slicing your definition of of, of the percents? We we slice based on major browser revision. So we have different support levels for Chrome 34 than we do for Chrome 35. Okay. But all of the Chrome 35s are considered under one support level. Okay. So uh, every major browser revision with more than three percent share. Yeah. So so the the pre Firefox and current version of Firefox, the big number releases, you'd look at those separately to see if they have a three percent share. Yeah. All right. Okay. Okay, Mike, this email you gave me, he's having trouble logging in? That's all he posted, yes. Okay, um, can you pick a new password for him, tell him what it is, and put it in chat for me, and I'll reset it? Me? For the SUT? With the uh, judge login? Ah, you do? Yeah, I can I can reset his password, but um, pardon me if I don't want to email any of the okay. competitors directly myself. Yeah, sure. That way I can do. Ah, right. thanks. There you go. There's a new password, and I will let Mike tell him what his new password is. Yeah. Any documentation to review? You could review the Vendasto website for claims and brand. Whoa, what 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 are you? Oh, you can see my screen. <laughs> I can see your screen. Yeah, I'm gonna click away from that. Um, this is apparently um, 800 salespeople breaking my salesperson administration interface. <laughs> um, well, it that's was, good to know. Yeah, <laughs> it's gonna suck for the guy who. Password. I'm trying to reset. I'm going to have to use a different tool to reset his password. Okay. Thankfully, I have multiple. So there were a couple of people that said they did not, that their, their users couldn't log in, right? And if that's you, please leave a comment at the top because the amount of comments is overwhelming at this point. And we'll try to get you set up. What are the most used features of the web app? Are you able to extract data from the website to tools such as Excel or Word? Oh, there's another one. Bump. And uh, te test side, the whole test side story team. Let's see here. Okay, while we wait, we've got a, a whole a group, a internationally renowned group of judges here that are on the hangout with me. While we, uh, and I really don't want to ask Jason to multitask and try to do six things at one time. So we're going to try to get some logins for the people who don't have logins, which would be the most fair. But um, maybe while we wait, we can talk to some of our judges about what they do and why they're here, if that's fair. Is, um, is, do, 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 do. So it's, Patrick is not on, in the hangout, is he? No, so let's start with him. I am. You are. Yes. Yeah. Now you should see me also. Yeah. 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 There I am. 
Hey, so Patrick Frill is a guy I know from Twitter. Um, tell us about Patrick and and where's home and and uh, what you do. Um, my home is in Munich, Germany, or near Munich. So and yeah, I'm a test lead for a small company doing software for the automotive industry. Have a small team here. Um, yeah, since I have not enough participants to do uh, to join in the software test workshop, I said, okay, why not do the whole thing and see what the rest of the world got here? Yeah. Hmm, very I'm looking forward to all the test reports, all the work reports, and all the work that comes up the next weeks. It's going to be a lot of work. We're going to have a lot of judging to do. Yeah. So, but it's only one continent, so we get we get Europe knocked out. And unless you want to volunteer for Asia, which is um, really challenging, well, uh, do, 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 do. Um, okay. What's new and exciting for you, though? What's 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 the hottest, newest thing that's going on in in Testerland in Germany? <laughs> Just on, I think um, all the news that's coming through from all that session-based test management stuff. Um, all those uh, new ideas. Um, yeah, I, I worked for, for a bigger company, and we were mostly, you know, SQB based and, and that stuff. So, yeah, to have finally new approaches out of the factory school, outside of that, and yeah, trying out a lot. And my company allows me to, so that's fun to do. Good. I'm glad. I'm glad. Glad to hear it. <clears throat> Are you going to be in um, Potsdam in uh, November for the Worlds? It's just across the street, right? No, nah, not really. <laughs> from from your from your position, yes. Yeah. But from a German position, no. <laughs> we will see. We will see. Okay. All right, Patrick. Thanks. Uh, yeah. Let's go. Let's go from Germany to the Netherlands, where we have... One uh, question in between. Uh, sure. Jason, could you check in the Hangout if the URL sales tool demo.appspot.com slash login slash is the right one? That is one where the one team has problems to log in, even with the new password. Yeah, um, they're at the wrong URL. It should okay. be S twc.salestooldemo.appspot.com Could you just uh, type them there? Because yeah. my German, English, hearing, always mess it up, E and I and R, and then we can post it in the comments. Coming. Thanks. I appear to have Posted it twice, but uh, settings are in scope, right, Jason? Yes. Okay. Um, from Richard Bradshaw, he asks. Uh, I say, I said, email is in scope, but it says that no email will be sent. Um, there's two separate email systems. The email that it's talking about that says no emails will be sent until converted to pay is uh, for the actual products, whereas when you're in editing a snapshot report, there's an explicit email this report to a person uh, link, and that's the email that's in scope. Okay. So um, we're asked uh, what kind of scraping solution are we using? Can you support uh, non-UTF-8? And I was just about to type, should support UTF-8 English-like languages, so French, Canadian, and Spanish. Is that even right? I don't even know. We should have full UTF-8 support. Okay. Uh, if they type it in, we should spit it out, and it should look exactly the same. Um, Scraping-wise, um, you should, in theory, be able to... It won't pre-look... You could do a... London or Germany-based business, the search feature is not going to find it for you. 
Um, but that blank form that you get when you uh, when it fails to search, you can put anything you want in there. So yeah, you could put in a German company in there that whose website's all in German. We won't notice. We'll scrape it anyway. Um, we'll give it grades anyway. Um, I have no idea how well that will perform. It might be interesting. Yeah, and but um, Hebrew, Greek, you support that? Um, we should. Um, I haven't done explicit testing with right-to-left languages as opposed to left-to-right languages um, or vertical languages like Japanese. I know I can print the characters, um, but I don't know how well we parse when it's not left to right. Um, do you do we expect Japanese and Chinese to really work? Uh, not really. Yeah, we we don't really support. I'm just typing in the answer. Yeah. Japanese. Okay, I'm trying to find the next email that I gotta fix. There it is. So, test side story. I'm fixing yours now. So do you have, um, I'm going to put these. Scott Hamilton, Ian Newman, and Sarah Wilkins. That, those are test side story, right? Um, the email that I'm given for fixing test side story was Bob, I am six. That's weird. They just direct messaged me what I put in. Um, what I put in uh, 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 the chat. So I'll ask. Okay, I'm using the password that's in the channel for them. Bob, I am six at what dot com. Um, I gotta look at it again. Uh, there were a couple people that when I created accounts, their accounts didn't create because their email had been used by another team and one person who didn't give me give an email at all so uh, where's that Bob I am one Bob I am six at gmail.com and it says test side story um, All right. Well, I'll, <clears throat> I'll Twitter them and say we're doing Bob I am the six. And if you need more, let me know. Yeah. Uh, the next one I'm going to fix will be Charlie. I'm not going to butcher your last name. Sorry, Charlie. Um, but from realdoldmen.com. So Ash Winter is asking what tests already exist for this site. And I'm replying, what do you mean? It compiles, it deploys, and you can log. Uh, your voice cut out, Matt. Yeah, it probably muted me when I was typing. Um, Ash Winter asks what tests already exist for the site. And I replied, what do you mean? You can, it compiles. You can deploy it, and you can log in in Chrome. Um, I, I will answer that. To well, an you're nice. You're a nice guy. I know. Um, well, just wait till they hear my answer. Um, I have two testers currently assigned to this product. Uh, they're unfortunately also assigned to another product, and this one is their lowest priority. Um, we release weekly. And they do feature tests weekly. They attempt to find time to do regression tests weekly. There is a very, very happy path Selenium test that verifies that I can log in and create an account with a known phone number. That's about it. 
So login, create account with known phone number is the happy path to any automation. All right. Yeah. So Charlie from Real Old Men, your password has been reset. Box UK, Sarah Wilkin will do you next. As soon as I find my mouse. I also need a password for the Charlie Misson. That's I used the one you gave me earlier. I'm going to keep using that one. Same one? Okay, good. Do we consider the to include the possibility to save the snapshot for future offline use. Hmm. Um, yeah, actually, I, I think that's a pretty viable option. Um, and if it doesn't work, I'd certainly like to know about it. Okay. Um, is this application having help? Is it localized or translated in other languages? I know the second answer is no. We have not done any translations yet. Is there is is there even if you log in, uh, uh, we've got it up, right? No, that's the settings page. Um, that's me making Sarah Wilkins. Sarah Wilkins. Oh boy. You but does the, app, does, does the app even have help? Really? Um, there was a minor help system built into it. There, once upon a time, there was some round icons with a question mark that you could click on that um, would give you would uh, give you better information. Um, we have a, a new help system coming, um, but it's still in development. Sarah Wilkins, apparently I already created your account, um, so let's look you up. What uh, technologies are used for the application? They want to know what databases are in the back end. We can, <laughs> tell, we can tell them Google App Engine. Yeah, we use Google App Engine. They use a NoSQL database called Datastore or NDB. Uh, if that means anything to you and helps you out, cool. Um, Frankly, I doubt it. Um, is, it, is there a Black standard frameworks? We use Web App Two and a mixture of Django and Jinja. Um, Sarah Wilkins. Uh, okay. Sarah Wilkins, I don't know why you can't log in. Your account exists. Um. That's the. Django is a is a Rails like framework for PHP. No, well, not the way we use it. We're a Python shop. Right, it's a, it's a Rails engine for Python. Um, I, I mean by Rails I mean model view controller and yeah, um, convention yeah. over configuration and a bunch of magical other stuff that happens. Yeah, right. Django is a framework. There are. Uh, a web framework. There are implementations in it for multiple backend languages. Python is one of which, one of such. Uh, is there a standard mobile devices the user will be issued with? It's so it's bring your own data, bring your own device. Yeah. iPads are a reasonable, are a popular reasonable use case. Okay. Miss Wilkins, your password should be this. Let's find out. Wow, there's a lot of questions. 
Yep. It's uh, different being in my in my chair, hey? <laughs> for uh, those of you who don't know, uh, for the North American competition, um, I did what Matt was doing and asked all the questions of the PO and Okay, Miss Wilkins, I was able to access your account using your default password. I will put your default password in my chat window so that you and your entire team should all have your accounts available on the default password. Mike, I will give it to Mike and he will pass it on to you. Um, and yes, our passwords allow capital letters, spaces, and special characters. So if you use such in your team name, it's in your password. Ah. Um, bum, bum. Looks like I got one more account to fix, which is Anthony Lawlor from Edge Testing. Mm, no. What's acceptable reasonable performance for search? How slow is too slow? Mm, that's a good question. Um, I would say within five seconds it should either give you a blank form or give you options for filling in the form. Want to make it six? Let's make it six. In five seconds is not a problem, but six is. Uh, are there any enhancements planned? It's kind of an odd question. Um, yeah, we got. Uh, we do have some enhancements planned. Um, none that should affect your testing currently. Um, we have a help system coming that will. Uh, help users understand what each of the systems, which each of the sections of the report is for, and to help them create the accounts. Um, One interrupt. We've got more search providers coming too. Yeah, Mike? Um, I think the question was more in, um, are you interested in enhancement ideas from the teams? So that was a common theme in the other um, e STVC events as well. So we yeah. always uh, went ahead with, OK, yes, it's valid, as long as it's not the majority of your testing effort. Yeah. Um, if you want to put some enhancement ideas in your report based on your experience with the app, I'm more than welcome to that. Uh, if you want to file them as bugs, I would remind you that you're not a domain ex You're unlikely to be a domain expert or know what's already in my backlog. Sure. Uh, question, I can click on a pie chart and hide the items in the reputation monitor. Is that a feature? Okay, let me get that straight. Uh, you can click on a pie chart? Um, That's what they're saying. Yes, the pie charts are based on high charts. Um, it would, if you were able to do that and that wedge of the pie chart was also not there in the end user version of the report, that would be very interesting to me. Um, the high charts are very customizable, but it's a user interaction customizable. The, your changes to your pie chart shouldn't exist once you get to the customer view. Okay. Bum, 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 bum. Shoot. So, uh, in Osea, Razvan Kostia needs to get his password reset, and I can't figure out his, his address. There. It, oh, that's Bo, Bobim6. Did, did we already reset him? him? His password is the one that's already in our private chat. 
Um, so I've been asked to repeat in scope, out of scope for those that missed. Um, it's pretty simple. If it's in, it's in scope, if it says sales tool in your, your URL bar, if it doesn't say sales tool in your URL bar, um, it can be go, you can go there as an oracle, but any bugs you find there are out of scope. Also, out of scope is any form of load testing. We're hosted on Google App Engine, so if you do load testing, you're not testing my application, you're testing Google App Engine infrastructure, and I will send you a bill. So could you put the password you're using in the uh, yeah. chat again? Be um, there. Um, my chat window is running a little bit slow, but I, okay. I, post I posted it. Yeah. If it's still always the same. Was it already sent out to Sarah Wilkins, or was it supposed I send it out? Sarah Wilkins' password I didn't change because her original. Default okay. password did work. I verified that. Good. So, Can we so just the people, Yes, go ahead. The people from Test Side Story that are talking to me on the back channel say they can't create accounts. They can log in but not create accounts. The same problem Sarah Wilkins said she has is having in the... Um, the same problem Sarah Wilkins said she's having in the, the chat conversation. Wow, that's a lot of questions. We're really trying to do the best we can to answer the questions, folks. It's just it's um, yeah. Okay, Sarah, if you tune into your stream, let's take a look. Um, but um, I just gotta find your username and password. Nope, oh, no, you're not that one. You are that one. Okay, so they're reporting that you cannot create accounts. Puerto Rico. Ooh, are wildcard searches supported? If you search for, say, A star, wait, no. What if it was like question mark, question mark, question mark? And you had one company uh, called AAA and one company called EAA and a bunch of other stuff. You should either get back an empty form or some options. I don't know how useful the options would be. But but well, well, well are wildcard searches supposed to work? Mm, not particularly. Um, the general use case is a salesperson knows what company they're going to go to try to sell to, so they're setting up this report so they can give it to them or show it to them when they get to the site. Okay. Any known bugs in the system from testing before that we haven't bothered to fix? Um, none that I know of that... Uh, are currently in our bug tracker. Um, there may be one or two that the developer knows about that I don't. So for our purposes, just report them all. Yeah. Okay. Should accounts created be linked to a login so they can be seen on multiple devices logged into by the same user? If you are using the same salesperson ID, i.e. you're logging, I just created an account for Christie's Il Secondo on Sarah Wilkins' account. If Sarah Wilkins logs into her account now, it should show up. If I didn't answer your question, please let me know. Uh, who will maintain the system, the sales users or a set of admin users? Um, I'm going to have to make a guess by what you mean by maintain. Uh, who will, who's going to convert these demo accounts to paid? Um, a, a separate team does that. Who's going to delete accounts that are no longer needed? The salesperson does that. There's an X on the far right hand of that manage account screens that lets them delete the accounts. Uh, Mike, didn't I recover the in-scope, out-of-scope? Um, 
I was not uh, listening to that actually. So if you repeat repeat it already, anything, it's good. Anything Thank. that causes the URL to change such that it's clearly no longer this application, right? So if sales dash tool is no longer in your URL because you've gone to a different Vendasta tool, yeah. then 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 you're out of scope. Now that also the links to those out of scope areas should work, right? Once you're in those out of scope areas. It's considered Oracle data as opposed to in scope testing. Um, and I don't need to, I really shouldn't need to say it again. Do not load test my application. I will send you a book. <laughs> Sorry if we're a little bit sensitive about this. Somebody load tested the Asia local last week yep. and caused the competition to end early. And so, he actually te uh, load tested on the wrong URL, which made it worse. So it was not even the SUT, which has all the load balancer and could have handled it. Uh, but he did it on the wrong URL, which was connected to that. And that brought all the servers down. But yeah, still a bad uh, yeah. experience. And just a short interrupt. I would try to invite um, Felix Bergauer from uh, our HP um, bug tracker uh, tool into the Hangout. He was interested uh, how it looks on the front side of the event. Uh, we will see um, if it gets working on his mobile. So if somebody joins, then uh, we will introduce him then. Yeah. Um, Jackie has forwarded a question for me here that says, can I also quickly repeat the browser device support compatibility? Um, generally, if your screen is bigger than four inches on a mobile on a mobile device, um, I want and your experience is poor. I want to know about it. We expect to support that. Um, if your browser has more than three percent international share, I should be supporting it at some level. Um, so please don't tell me that I don't render correctly in Gecko. Gecko has like 0.05% browser share. That's awesome. Does it does it does it render properly in um, what was the old one Gopher? It does not render at all in Gopher. <laughs> um, on a on a weekly basis, I test it with major versions in Internet Explorer, Firefox, Chrome, and Safari. I do not explicitly test for Opera, but it should work because Opera uses the same render engine as one of the other browsers. I forget which one it is. So there's actually a Twitter user named Test Side Story who's Seeger Van Heis, who's not playing today, and a team named Test Side Story, and this is causing confusion on the Twitters. <laughs> people are saying, ha, 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 Zeeker, you can't get in, and he's replying, what? No, huh? What? I'm not even playing. It's kind of funny. There's just an incredibly huge amount of questions on that. <laughs> you know, Matt, I'm, I'm enjoying answering the questions instead of trying to keep on top of them. This is great. How do you pitch this tool to the business? Um, this tool... Um, is part of a package, and uh, we, we do pitch it to the business um, as part of pitching the entire package. Um, it's pitched as a, an extra tool in the toolbox for the salespeople who are trying to sell the suite. It allows them to create accounts for, accounts for customers at, uh, at a nominal fee per account as opposed to our monthly fee per account. Um, and it allows them to talk to the end business about how they're stacking up versus their competition. If these reports are set up correctly and the salesperson actually uh, checks that competitors field down at the bottom to make sure that those actually are the competitors for the business, it sell, sells a really compelling story about, oh, you know, you're, you're the bakery down the street is doing more Facebook than you are, and we can see what effect that's having. That's totally awesome. We should talk about this for my business. <laughs> I own a small business, and we are all, all social media-y. Oh. 
Is Opera in the supported browsers? Is Opera in a supported browser? Um, it, is it still a browser? <laughs> well, they use it in a lot of cell phones in Europe, right? Yeah, I, like I don't. Nokia or something, or oh, Ericsson, yeah. one yeah. of those guys uses it. I too. haven't explicitly so, tested about it, um, but right. if it's a common browser in Europe, I, sh I do want to know about it. Uh, Jackie's posted another question in our private chat. Can a company have multiple demo accounts? Are there any checks for duplicates, etc., by company email? Um, that email field, field that gets filled in there basically gets thrown away until they convert to pay. Um, so yes, it's possible to have the same company in there hundreds of times. Um, there's a small bar in Portland, Oregon that has about a hundred accounts on our system because we all like it. So we use it as test data. In Portland, really? Yeah. That's awesome. I, I get I get out there. How far are you? Are you you're near Vancouver? I didn't think you were that far west. No, no, we're nowhere nowhere near Portland, but Okay, okay. Um, we discovered this bar. They have really good web presence. Uh, oh, they got okay. really like a good example of them. They're, yeah. they're, they're an example to load when you're saying, hey, when you look at similar bars, then, yeah, right. No, they, they, awesome. they have really good exemplar data. They get a lot of reviews online on the various review sources. Um, they, When we first found them, they had a small problem with their online listings. Their address was listed wrong on a couple listings. So it was a really good exemplar for us to exercise the system with. So we got a couple hundred copies of that business in the system. So it looks like Opera has 1.8% market share for all of Opera combined, so we're going to say no based on um, uh, 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 what you said earlier. I posted that as an answer already. Should we see businesses not created by us using the search function? Is that, so that, I'm assuming that's the here's your list of your, your businesses that are your businesses, and then you click on the search, and it yeah. shows fewer. So I think they can still see my screen. I'm still logged into Sarah Wilkins. I haven't reloaded it, so I'm not giving away any. There's a, a search by name, location, phone number here. That search is only for the accounts that are created, whereas the search inside create account is search for businesses you could create for. And now that I look at my screen, I will log out of Sarah Williams before so I get away. So that's not on the manage account screen. No. Ooh, so James Svenzer is starting a little late, huh? He just he just posted, "Can we start now?" Damien said, "Yes." Um, welcome to the competition. You'll probably want to review the questions that have already been answered. I think Matt's been doing a pretty good job of transcribing all of my answers. Yeah, well, we've only gotten a small percentage. It's just it's, it's it's overwhelming, but but we're trying. Is the company planning to expand to Eastern Europe? Um, Eastern Europe? You mean like Ukraine, etc.? Uh, I would I would assume that means uh, Latvia, Romania, um, Lithuania, uh, Estonia, um, maybe as far as Ukraine. That'd probably be the end of it, right? And you're into Asia after that. Yeah. Um, Bulgaria? I will answer this question to the best that I can. We do not have a translator currently on staff. Our current target is English language or anything that can be treated as if it's English language. So we do okay. some Spanish in the States and in Mexico. Um, our website remains in English, but we still process the Spanish websites, etc. Some of the answers get looking a little bit dumb, but right, because the, the Nordic, the Nordic languages and the Russian languages can be significantly different than the Romance and the Germanic languages, right? So, but if they had a website that was in English, you could do it. Yeah. Um, basically, the two really good qualifiers for a business that we'd want to try to sell to is a small-medium business that wants to encourage 
either online traffic or foot traffic. Specifically foot traffic, we specialize in businesses that have a bricks and mortar uh, location because uh, almost everything we do is location based um, and try to help them have a web presence on top of their bricks and mortar presence. Try business with a strong web presence that has a strong physical location. Yeah. They don't need a strong web presence. That's one of the things we're trying to help them with. Uh, should we take into account accessibility tests? How do you prioritize this kind of test? Um, we haven't done a lot of accessibility testing except for color blindness. Um, we probably should. Um, how would I prioritize it? Um, I'm going to leave that up to you. I've told you my lowest priority is, for any, is security, and my highest priority is mobile. Beyond that, it's up to you to fill in the middle. And uh, just an interrupt here. So some of the questions we also willingly ignore. Um, and that is really up to the team to decide. It's um, any tester should use their own testing experience in figuring out uh, if a typo could be really considered a critical bug type or not, um, or how would they approach the SUT for their testing. So these kind of questions um, we mostly ignore because that would really like doing the testing for you, basically. Um, I'm looking through the list of questions Jackie's posted here. Um, are there any performance advice any other related improvements that viable to you from a client side perspective? Um, I'm guessing uh, what you're asking here is, do I care? Do I care about the performance? Yes. If any of the pages are slow loading while we're doing this. Um, and slow, I mean, like, longer than five seconds. Um, although you should have something visible on your screen, but not maybe not interactive within a second. If you are violating that, if anything you do repeatedly violates that, file it. Um, are there UI, UX test results other than RWV valuable to you? I don't even know what that sentence means. Um, I'm sorry, I don't know what RWD is. Do one of the other judges know what RWD is? RWD? Let me find this. Let's find the comment. RWD. Are there any UI UX test results other than RWD valuable for you? Well, let's Google RWD UI UX. Learn something new every day. Yeah. Um, while you're looking that up, I'll look at question four in Jackie's list, which is how would I define internationalization requirements regarding this application? Um, if you are using an internationalized keyboard, you should still be able to interact with it. Uh, if you have non-North American currency number whatever settings, you should be able to interact with it. Um, it will not be in your language because we haven't updated it to be in other languages. It's always in English. Um, our technology is there so that we can do those translations, but we haven't done them yet. And so my current internationalization efforts are, does it work in English in other countries? Mm. And thank you, Guna. I did miss nickyorg at gmail.com. I will check that account right now. RWD is Responsible Web Design. Ah, yes. Um, which I only figured out I, through context. It didn't actually say it. Yes. Yeah, so if, you Google, if you Google RWD, you get a bunch of things that eventually I, my brain went, oh, and they're talking about response. They never define it. It's kind of fun. Yeah. Cool. I Yes, we do. Yes, we do responsive web design. Am I interested in other results other than responsive web design? Yes.
but we need to get off that screen. Hmm. Oh, we had it on your screen, and you were in the you were in the um, uh, uh, somebody's account password configuration management -y stuff. I just lost my video. What? That's weird. Uh, internationalization requirements. C U T F A. So Mike. NickyOrg at gmail.com needs to be sent their password. They do. Oh, I have some copies of that. Okay, you can show my screen again if you want. I suppose I could turn off my screen share because you guys pretty much don't need it anymore. And then people can, I don't know if they want to, but they can see me. Ladies and gentlemen, Jason Gattu. Uh, <laughs> hello. If you want to meet Jason in person, he will be at CAST Conference for the Association for Software Testing in New York City on August 9th, I think, maybe? No, the 11th. No, 9th is Test Camp. Test, test Retreat, which is August 9th, also in New York City. Jason will also be at, he is a three-time attendee at test, at test Coach Camp events. Test Camp, Test Retreat, Test, I don't know yep. what to call it. <laughs> Testing Open Space events. So. If you know testers in Canada that want to move to the Grand Old Prairies, I'm hiring. <laughs> hey, if you, can work legally, if you can work legally in the United States and need no paperwork or sponsorship, um, uh, Exelon Development has contract openings in West Michigan right now. Um, yeah. So, just saying. Oh, man, more. I should get back to the questions. <laughs> How important for you is the security of the information emailed by the email report tool? Um, that's a good question, and I'm glad somebody asked it. Uh, the link to the report in the email is completely, completely unauthenticated. If someone else has a copy of that link, they can go to that page. Um, it's done that way on purpose. Um, that being said, there's a second link in that email to reset your business center password, and that, that gives you an ability to log in to the actual demo account as opposed to the sales tool, and that should be secure. Um, that uh, reset password link should only work once. Uh, Andre says, as a user, can I email the same business report with different settings to different customers? Um, you can email different customers, but the settings are for that account. And so you can email out the report, change the settings, and when the user checks the report, they will have the changed settings. Uh, that's known functionality. Uh, if you wanted to send the same business with different settings to different users, you would have to create the business multiple times. Is it okay that the application runs not on a secure protocol? In other words, HTTP instead of HTTPS. Yes, that is expected. The password is submitted over HTTPS um, and validated on a back channel that, uh, for lack of a better term, not hackable. Um, there is... oh. Huh. Security, known bug. There is a known session hijack bug. 
um, that is in the backlog. Um, That's interesting. Um, what was it? Oh, yeah, the deadline. We know that. That's 9 p.m. Berlin time. For you muted again, Matt. Right. That happens when I type and talk at the same time. Sorry. What will be the deadline? Jano Svens... Sven for is asking because he's uh, uh, because uh, he's saying we started late actually we started and then stopped and then restarted but same thing 9 p.m. Berlin time deadline for bug reports and, and test reports just like any other real software product where you're supposed to have a week to do testing and then uh, software's a day late now you have four days to do testing right how important is it to be able to email the report? It's pretty, pretty important, right? It's our newest functionality. It hasn't been released to our end users yet. It's just now in the past week made it up to the demo environment, which is where you guys are testing. But it's like if that doesn't work, that's a problem. Pretty much. Yeah. So we're being asked if it's designed for mobile phones. It's more like iPads and iPad minis, right? Yeah. Um, if it, as I, as I said, if it's got a really horrible experience on anything over four inches, I want to know about it. Um, primary design is around an iPad, though. Well, that's interesting. Look at the YouTube. Um... <laughs> I um, hmm. let's take. I'm going to take this comment to Skype. Uh... You guys, other judges, you might want to look at Skype. I didn't sign into Skype today. Whoops. Uh, if you get on, Jason, I'll invite you. We've got a, a judges hangout. It's going. Yeah, I got it. In addition to the hangout, we've got the judges Skypey thing. Yeah, that one is already uh, forwarded, so we could not, uh, should just not talk about that yet. To not stir up sleeping bears, kind of. Yeah, but basically, you know, um, how should I put that? Uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to type this in and discuss it with the judges before I share it. I uh, just realized um, the camera looks like I'm rolling my eyes a lot. Um, it has more to do with the angle of the camera, and you can see the projector in the back. I'm viewing everything on a like 65-inch projection screen, so uh, I'm not rolling my eyes. I just my primary monitor is the projection screen right now. Yeah, What's the name of this app? The sales tool app? Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, everybody check the Skype. And I've got to add, I'll add Jason to Skype. Not how is there? There we go. Just added Jason. Does that seem reasonable? Uh, let me pull it down to my other screen. Should I say it out loud?
I would probably skip yeah. the discovering sentence entirely. Unless you want to say negative bonus point. Well, I mean, it's just exploring, I, but, but yeah. It's not the same long. test. But this. I think you're right. I think. How about this? About that. Yep, that's one going to write up. There it is. I'm sorry, I've got it. I'm, I'll be right back. I'm hearing something. Like that. Yeah. That's probably just a mailman. It's probably just a mailman. Okay. I heard somebody in my house and there's nobody home. It's the mailman. Um, let me answer that question then. So I'm seeing a, a, a problem logging in for Demony Tamas. Let me just check the logs, see what's up. Okay, I've answered to that question on the, the YouTube channel, and we can get back to work. Regular expressions in search function, not really. It should, you should just type in the literal company name, right? Yeah. So let's remember our users are going to be somewhat non-technical salespeople trying to go and... and go to a small business to get them to use Vendasta products. Right? Exactly. Are email reports supposed to be retroactively retro? I think they mean retroactively editable. And I think you've already answered that. Yes, if you change the settings, they'll show up in the reports which are generated. Yes. Yeah. Why? So my notes say it's 1.30 Eastern time, which means we are halfway through the competition. If you haven't yet with your team, you might be started to talk about what do we know and um, what can we say and how are we going to say it because you're going to have to email the reports back to us. Not in, It's amazing how fast the time goes. How much time should it take to generate a report? You said 10 minutes earlier, right? Um, yeah, it's supposed to take about 10 minutes to generate a report. Uh, I think if you try to access a report early, it tells you that it's supposed to take 10 minutes. I've seen it take less. Um, I've seen it take more. If it consistently takes more, that's an issue. If it takes more because the page is really kind of strange, um, that's uh, an important issue for me to see. There is only one link to report. Is that correct behavior? I don't know what that means, but I think so. Mm, only one link to report. I think that means when you email yourself a report, you get one link. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. Um, So I'm writing on the page. I think that's correct. One link to the report in the email and a reset password link. Mm -hmm. Jason, in yes, the Hangout, I sent you um, 
some email address from some guy who locked himself out. Could you reset it, please? Uh, the Demi Thomas one? No, no, the last one. PN to Mixer. I don't know how they've locked themselves out would be the issue. I can reset passwords easily enough. Well, I can't because that screen's bro broken right now. Um, I'm supposed to be able to. There's a API I can do it over if I know there's salesperson ID, but it's uh, so with 800 salespeople attached to this partner. It's um, breaking my one of my main interface screen. So, so Daniel Deck on Twitter is saying that they have a different problem. His team can see all the registered issues for every team, forcing him to cheat. He must be misconfigured as a, as an instructor accidentally or something, as a judge or something. Send me the email and I forward it to the bug people. Okay. So, um, if you're having login issues, um, this is really important, so we should probably transcribe this onto the channel. If you're having any sort of login issue, uh, you've logged out and now you can't log back in, um, a lot of this is done with cookie management. Clear all of your cookies for this domain and it should fix the problem. If it doesn't, please let me know. As, as in raise an issue in the YouTube channel. Um, uh, hopefully you're able to continue testing. Every team should have multiple um, testing accounts, um, unless you're a team of one. If you're a team of one and you're, and you're locked out, that's I really want to fix that for you, so let me know. I should probably try to log into Agile, Agile Manager. See if I can see what they're talking about. So that last email you gave me, Mike, um, I don't see anything in the logs from them logging in more recently than an hour ago. So if they've logged, tried to log in more recently than an hour ago, they probably have a typo somewhere. Okay, well, on time. Thank you. I'm seeing a bunch of bugs. Ton of them. What is that? Where are they supposed to put their team name in a drop down, Mike? Sorry, was just answering the email. Uh, what was your question on HP? Where are they supposed to put the team name? Is it in, is it? It's when they create a bug and issue. Yeah. Uh, one of the fields at the bottom, uh, above the description field, should be application. Yeah. And it should be, yeah, filled with the uh, team names. Okay, so I haven't done this since we graded USA, right? So I may be confused because yeah. I can see all of the bugs, but that's just because I'm an administrator. Exactly. Okay. Um, Jackie has posted something for me from Christian, and they asked, can a report be generated again? So would the customer see updated data after a week? Uh, this is actually a really good question and something I should have highlighted earlier. Um, the account, the reports are generated on the fly when they're accessed based on the settings that have been saved up for up to a week. After a week, the account, the demo becomes stale and stops updating. 
it will continue to show what it showed when it got to be a week old um, indefinitely. Does that answer make sense? So I'm being told on Twitter by one team that everyone can see everyone else's issues. The accounts were misconfigured. And everyone has access to every other account for Agile Manager, for the bug tracker. Is this true? Please let me know on Twitter or the YouTube channel because that would be, that would make grading much more challenging. That would make playing much more challenging. Is there a version num is there a version number they should be using when filing bugs, Jason? Does it matter? Um, no. Uh, I know what version they're on because they're all testing today. Okay. Is there any kind of session timeout on login? Did someone already ask that? And we already answered that. And I zoomed oh. out. Uh, no, I didn't answer that. Uh, is there a timeout for logins? Um, as long as you're interacting with the page, you shouldn't get logged out. If you do not interact with a page for any page for an hour, you should timeout. Uh, so probably not something easy for you guys to test during the testing competition. Well, they could... They, they could test in a browser that we've got a little over an hour left, but they could test in a browser they're not using. Yeah, it would have to be like a completely separate browser, though, um, because of how the session management is done. Right. Couldn't be a new tab. Couldn't be a new tab, yeah. Um, how can we send information to a demo account? I don't know. Say that one again, Matt? How can we send information to a demo account? It, how, I'm guessing this means how do we email the report to the person, the target email that you want to send it to, i.e. the customer who's... Right whose report you've generated, um, top right-hand corner of the edit report screen has an email report link. Okay. So at least one team reported in that they only see their own bugs. That's good. Are we supposed to test snapshot reports? No. Uh, yes. Um, that is that is the central element of what we are testing is the snapshot reports. Um, if you ended up on a URL that says snapshotreports.biz, I would find that very very interesting because that's our production environment, not our demo environment. 
Um, if it's snapshot reports demo.biz, that would be quasi expected. So, someone writes, I've managed to insert some scripts into the page and make the accounts form completely inaccessible. I cannot use the managed accounts form. Can you help me to delete my accounts? <laughs> um, yes. Um. I'll, ask, I'll ask for his email address. Yeah. Jason, I yeah, post you some uh, comment uh, from the guy who locked himself out. Um, yeah. It seems like a genuine bug, which he entered already, <laughs> but that bug uh, seems to really have uh, locked him out. So, to not give away uh, yeah. um, his information. Yeah, I just got to find where you posted it. Sorry. Multitasking at its finest. I am yeah. Why if I just say it's automatically saved again? Oh. Oh. Um, Mike, is he on a one person team? Um, not quite sure. If he's um, on a one person team, I'll try and do something about this, but if he's yeah. not have to share accounts with someone else on his team because um, what he did shouldn't have been doable <laughs> um, yeah. and I have no idea how I'm going to fix this without creating him a new account. Cool. Uh, let me see if I find his uh, my Excel list with the team members. Matt, you put up an email there. What's up with that account? They need they need the they need their password reset so they can log in. They've already logged in once. Uh, I think so. If they've already logged in once and clearing their cookies doesn't yeah. fix them, then they've uh -huh. done something like this other gentleman. Um, at which point they need to use another account from their um, from their from their testing. Okay, so this, the, the thing says, I'm from the Quality Explorers team. One of our team members has a problem with login to the sales tool. Maybe they haven't ever logged in. Could you uh, please set the login credentials for blog? I can, I'll check that email to find out if I have an account for them. If they don't, I can create a new account. Um, but yeah, as I said, I discovered this morning that uh, all of my managed salesperson screens are busted with this many salespeople. Okay, my guy is in a three-person team, so I advise him to uh, enter his information via some others, and um, yeah, to do the testing via some other people's account. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm gonna let Jason type for a minute. So let's go to um, the Netherlands, where we have Jackie, who is one of our judges. Uh, Jackie Frank, right? Yes, correct. Hi, I don't have a webcam, so oh, you have okay. to do with my uh, my picture. I, I think the audience will see a picture of you that is the growing circle as you get louder and quieter. But there's there's a picture. Okay, so I guess they'll have to do with that. 
Uh, yeah, Netherlands tester. I work as a um, test engineer, test analyst, test coordination um, at uh, T-Mobile right now in the Netherlands, in The Hague. I've uh, been testing for a bit more than three years now, and um, I decided it was, would be fun to judge this uh, competition since I was not in the team. And um, I'm really in, enjoying it so far, so that's good. So keep coming up with uh, your questions and uh, whatever you want to know, right? Wait till you get to the part where we have to actually go through and wade through the I don't book. know how many. I, I, think, I think we're going to triage it, right? So, so we're going to sl slice the different teams up by, by, by the different judges and in the top five t teams for every judge, we're going to come back and judge those. But um, it's going to be a lot of work. It's okay. So tell us about um, uh, your interest in testing. What's new and exciting that you're doing right now, Jackie? Well, I um, actually just uh, did a presentation on the Testnet conference on one of my first uh, testing experiences, which was really nice. And I also um, got into the Eurostar conferences for this year. And I will be presenting something on assumptions and testing. So that's going to be really cool. But that's going to be November, so I have some time to prepare that. Well, tell us about tell us about assumptions in in testing. Well, we're not supposed <coughs> to make assumptions, right? That's what we were told. And um, but I've also noticed that we always make assumptions, mm -hmm. and that's basically uh, a paradox. And I think it's good to explore that paradox and to become more aware of your assumptions, so you know which ones you need to test and how you can uh, avoid the pitfalls that comes with assumptions. And I think it's a really interesting uh, premise. And uh, I also have uh, quite a few um, real-life examples of how assumptions sometimes go wrong. And um, I'm really uh, looking forward to um, be spotting assumptions here, too. There will probably be many. Right. If you start, if you start so, so, so I agree, if you start playing the aha, you're assuming game, you end up with a bunch of questions you have to get the customer to validate, and just getting those questions answered would take longer than the, the length of the, the testing would be, right? So you have to do some sort of risk-reward balance for your questions and your verifying assumptions. Exactly. It's not necessarily a bad thing to make assumptions because, you know, otherwise we wouldn't even be able to communicate. So, right, uh, yeah. Yeah, it will become a really big hassle. And some people even go as far as saying that all knowledge is an assumption. So, But I think it would just be good if we're more aware of it, and then you can also test your assumptions, maybe in hindsight. or So it's, uh, yeah, something, something you can play with. Is anybody here a philosopher? Yeah, a little bit, me. <laughs> yeah. can, can you define knowledge? Define knowledge. <laughs> Yeah. So I was at I was at a conference once and um, somebody said something like that and I stood up and I said justified true belief. Yeah. <laughs> and the guy said that just proves that you've read a little bit of Plato. So I thought that was amusing. So, yeah. Right. Um, there's a guy named Thomas Vaniotis who's actually done a, a lightning talk about I can probably Google it. Justified true belief and and of course he's saying that. We really can't ever know anything as testers. We just like there's test. You know how do you know how do you know that your justified true belief is justified, or even that it's true? <laughs> it's just a, anyway. Sorry, it's um. Yeah, but that's that's the kind of discussions you get when you really get down to what is an assumption and what is not an assumption. Then you yeah. realize that everything is an assumption, but we have to live with some of them. Probably out of scope for our. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> but thanks. Cool. Um, before we uh, before we get back to Jason, um, let's finish our roundup with the Netherlands and drop by uh, uh, Zwolle, where we have Pascal Dufour, another one of our judges. Hello, Pascal. Oh, Pascal's muted. He had his kids in the background earlier. Are you are you on, Pascal, or did you go get a sandwich? Well, he, he might, 
I think he posted in Skype uh, a few minutes ago that he was going to be away for a little bit. Oh, I'm sorry. I can't keep up with all the different things. So. Okay. All right. Well, we'll come back to the Netherlands in a minute. Right now, we're back in Canada with Jason. And uh, our, is our backlog of uh, email resets cleared out? As far as I know, I did the three that you gave me. Okay. Uh, is uh, Alina Ionasu is asking, is there a limit for upload picture? I'm assuming that means file size. I've completely forgotten about the upload picture. Um, not that I know of, although anything over several megs will probably break the system. Um, I did not test it with very large pictures. It's meant for headshots of the salespeople. I think the largest file I tried with it was like two or three megs. Okay. Should other users see account report of some other user? Furthermore, should they be able to edit the account of other user? Um, no. And this is something explicitly that I was worried about that these salespeople are all members, all of your test accounts, i.e. The, the account that you log into as opposed to the account you create. I'll call them salespeople. So you guys log in as salespeople. A salesperson should only see small business accounts for small businesses they have created. If they're seeing small businesses for someone else, from, for some other login, and you can both edit it, that is very worrisome to me. I'm uh, looking at the resource usage graph for the application since the competition started, and uh, uh, no intentional stress test, but it's uh, stressing the system. That's interesting. There's a bug that I'm going to... Oh, it's long URL. But um, I'm posting it into... So this is for the judges. Uh, that was posted in the YouTube video you might be interested in. Are there any restrictions regarding the visibility of the reports generated by the snapshot? Any restrictions with regards to the visibility of the report generated by the snapshot? Oh, no, no, right, right, right. Anyone with a link can see it. The web is crashed. I can't log in. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, I didn't follow that. <laughs> yes, my reply was, uh, period, 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 period. You'll have to be a little. You'll have to be a little more specific. Uh, someone is asking who is speaking. You have a beautiful voice. Must have been Jackie. <laughs> because no one ever says that about you and I, Matt. <laughs> I don't. It's not a comment I get often. I don't think I ever got it, so thanks. <laughs> oh, so Gurgly Brodigam says he found a different way to test session timeout without the need to wait for an hour. Hmm. 
what that was. I wonder if his session timeout is in JavaScript and he's just he's changing his computer clock. I don't know. I'm not sure, but I look forward to reading that bug report. If you find somebody the bug. Hacked, somebody hacked one of our bugs. Well, that's interesting. I don't know what that means. Yeah, that means that uh, the bug tracker tool, um, somebody is using this exploit. Uh, well, don't do that. In the log files, um, yeah. yeah. You do it on your own risk and will be probably be excluded uh, from the competition. Hmm. Oh, my goodness. That is amazing. Chucking. Sorry, my lunch came. How do they know it was hacked, and what does hacked mean? We're talking about defect number 51. Yeah, that basically somebody changed it. Deleted some info attachment, changed it in a different way. That's my assumption now. I don't have the time to look into uh, the bug tracker at the moment. It was created. The next meeting is starting now. No, it's not. I'm not seeing it in the history. So I'm looking in the history of that bug, and I'm not seeing anything in there. That, when you're looking in the re instance, it's the middle one. No, it should be three instances. Oh, it's a different instance. Uh, no, I'm, so what I'm looking at says hacked in the title. Of the book. Yeah, I see that too, and I see it in the history who did it. I'm not seeing what they did. You can see it too. Send you a screenshot. Uh, I, I see the word hacked. Injected. Was that the change? They injected. They injected the word hacked. Yep. Yeah. That's um, okay. okay. It says somebody hacked. Oh, that's weird. And the one above also. Number fifty. Yep. But the yeah, only so again. Stop doing that. You're not. You don't need to test Agile Manager. Um, if you find problems, well, the the way Agile Manager works is you have an instance for your organization. And those people, it's behind the firewall, or it's, just, it's, a, it's an instance that you give out to people in your organization. So the ability to segment in Agile Manager, and somebody, is, and somebody needs to meet, somebody's on speaker. But, but uh, the, the, the ability to segment it, the ability to segment an Agile Manager is so to simplify viewing and reporting, but it's it, it, it's not really uh, this is not like a financial application or an application where they're going to sell it to both Google and Microsoft and they can look at each other's bugs. It's going to be sold each instance is sold to one organization. There are multiple instances for the competition. So if you can snarf into inside of your own instance to some other team and change the values in Agile Manager. I mean, that's, that's a, I guess it's good to know, um, but um, it's not our purpose today, and it doesn't add a ton of value, and it, it detracts from the sportsmanship of the, of the event. So, um, but if we can, let's focus on testing um, 
the Vendasta software under test the sales demo to please, tool, please. So what's next? Mm. So we have one user who is insisting that um, on Twitter that they can see everyone's bugs na natively. They don't have to do any kind of tricking or manipulation. They just see everything. So we'll get his login and try to figure that out. It is possible that they're set up as an administrator. Um, so do the best you can. Try not to cheat. Other questions? Uh, Jason, I hope you're having a good meal. For those of you who don't know, eating stuff on Hangouts is kind of my thing, so it's kind of allowed. But, but I snarfed everything down right before the, uh, when, in the Hangout, before the Hangout with the other judges. So you didn't have to see that. Um, does field validation only occur on mandatory fields? Oh, Jason's muted. Probably because he was eating. Jason, you muted. Sorry. Sorry. Um, there is some very rudimentary validation on some of the fields. Um, if it's a URL, it must have at least one dot in it and no spaces. Um, if it's a phone number, it should only have characters one normally expects in a phone number, and even then we're probably going to strip it down to just the numbers. Um, so yes, there is there should be some rudimentary um, uh, validation. Uh, nothing to the extent of we're going to make sure that this data is correct. It's more of a we're going to show that this data looks like it's in the correct format. Just catching obvious and simple errors. Mm How can I add a review for a company? <laughs> uh, well, um, companies actually ask us this all the time. Um, our, none of our products are actually, uh, none of our products currently they can leave reviews. We look for reviews that already exist. Um, because we're selling this to small businesses, the ability to leave reviews is something that's frowned upon, generally called astroturfing, um, whereas the purpose of our products is to let them know what's already being said by people that are out there and engage with them. So if, you wanted, if, if you wanted to simulate adding a review in order to see if things change, you'd have to actually add a review by TripAdvisor or something like that. Um, yes, and even then there'd be some delay um, because TripAdvisor doesn't tell us when a new review has been added. We have to go ask them. Our production environment currently does this for 
in excess of 200,000 businesses a day. Um, so it's not something we do every second. It's something we do on a randomized schedule per business. Every business is guaranteed to have their reviews, their new reviews gathered at least once every 24 hours. They might get more than once every 24 hours because every time we pull, pull the reviews, we randomly schedule the next poll for the reviews to some random time in the next 24 hours. So there's a comment that bug hackers should be banned from the contest. <laughs> I'm writing that uh, we'll see how much damage they do. Right now it looks like they are proving that they can do it, not actually manipulating the results. Um, yes, somebody... but it's, I think, uh, already established that it's possible to do it. Yeah, it's and been proven, so stop. Uh, <laughs> teams should rather focus on the actual testing and uh, reports. Um, Jackie's posted something from Anna, who said, it seems there's some problems with the DB. Um, it's not a database, so that would be the first problem. Um, it's a NoSQL data store. Um, DB operations create and edit accounts will randomly fail. Um, the randomly worries me. Um, if you can find something that triggers it, that would be awesome. Um, we do occasionally run into some transaction locks where too many instances are trying to access the data store at the same time. It's pretty rare if you're seeing it commonly. That's important if it, you're seeing it like you're testing hard for two and a bit hours now and you've seen it like once or twice, I wouldn't worry too much about it. Um, the, the load that we're currently putting on the system um, for interactive is probably two to three times our normal daily load. Um, businesses tend to log in, do their work, and be back out in about 15 minutes. So while we have over 200,000 uh, users, well, they're not all on at the same time. They usually all only come on like once a week, sometime during the week, unless we email them um, a report that says there's something they need to see. Uh, when do I expect this product to be released? What is the deadline for release? This product. Um, we're an agile company. We release this product every week on Tuesdays. Uh, you are currently looking at the version that is uh, scheduled for release next Tuesday. Um, there is a version with one or two features less than the one you're currently using already available to our customers. That was from Three Soft Revenge fifty nine. Oh. <laughs> it's sign into business center from email in scope for testing. Sorry. Um the yes, the sign in is in scope. Um, the place where you end up after you've signed in is not. It's a really fine line, I know. Is well, that's weird. 
is the URL I'm about to put in the Google Hangout chat in scope. Uh, in the Hangout chat. stwc.vbc-demo.adspot.com. Anything, anything that has that URL would be in scope, yes. That's the business center. So just to log oh, into sorry. that. All right, that's VBC demo. Sorry. Um, that's the business center. That's where you're going to get sent. Um, that first screen where you're asked to update your password, it is in scope. But after you uh, edit your password um, and you end up in the actual business center, then you're out of scope. Right. Mohinder well, can't get the security quest now. Can you just have mm -hmm. How did Mohinder report that, Andre? Andre Drea? Sorry. It's just a comment in the YouTube channel. Okay. I'll just reply to him in YouTube then. It's Simon Knight's comment, so oh, okay. Yeah. We've only got so the thing is we've only got forty five minutes left. His email is also in the chat for the password reset. Uh, Mike, oh, okay. do you want to answer that question from Sibyl that Guna put up in the uh, chat? Yes. So normally um, it should show the team name. If that is not uh, really showing, um, I can forward her team to HP and get it sorted there. Um, otherwise, uh, she can try to manually fill it, uh, see if that works as a workaround, and we sort it out um, later. But we're already on it. I uh, give it to our HP support guys. Yep. Someone else, I don't know, you might have just been talking about this, but I was reading. Someone else says, my Agile Manager account has the application field blank. Should I register the defect anyway? I think if they do, everyone's going to see it, right? After I confirm the Facebook address, do I need to do anything else in order to display the results in the report? Say that again? After I display the Facebook, after I confirm the Facebook address, do I need to do anything else in order to display the results in the report? Shouldn't need to. Um, if it's not, if if the Facebook address you've entered is correct and it's not showing up, that would be a bug. Okay. Um, there are certain classes of Facebook pages that we don't scrape correctly. I thought we'd covered them all off with our last round of Facebook fixes. But you never know, Facebook's a bit of a moving target. Are multiple logins allowed? I think that's yes. Yeah. Do we have to enable something to get it to work? 
I should have done that already. Um, yeah, well, I don't know what it is. Who are sales tools main market? Jason, did yes, you reset for Mohinders? Mohinders locked out of Agile Manager, right? Not, not, not. Um, oh, was oh, sorry. Ah, okay, sorry, mess it up. Yeah, okay, then I forward to the next person. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> no problem, Mike. Uh, main market competition for the sales tool? Um, we don't, there isn't really competition. Sales tool isn't something we sell. Sales tool is something that we give to partners to help them sell our main product which is reputation intelligence. Our main competitors there are products like Radiant Six. Um, our competitive advantage over somebody like Radiant Six is we do small business location based as uh, as a bottom up approach. Um, so we do support like subway chains, or oh, uh, sorry, chains, restaurant chains, and and anything as long as they have bricks and mortar presences. Um, and we can give you the reputation of your brand, but it'll be based on the reputation of all of your locations. Whereas a company like Radiant Six would look at that and say, well, the reputation of your brand is the reputation of your brand, and yes, you have multiple locations, and we'll give you, you, give you their reputations separately. Um, we're, Rep Radiant Six is designed, uh, is designed mostly for the large companies, whereas we focus on small, medium business. Okay, I cannot select my team name while trying to generate the bug report in HP Agile. Ah, uh, trying to generate bug, uh, trying to create a new bug. I'll try. I'll, I'll try to handle this. Okay. I am going to be right back. My throat is dry. I'm going to go grab a quick drink of water. I'll be gone for like 30 seconds. Okay. So if you're trying to create a new bug, and if it's new and you can't select an application, then... Uh, then everyone will be able to... then everyone will be able to see the bug, and what you're going to have to do is... Um, uh, put your team name in there and uh, that's going to make things hard for us if you're trying to run some report and you can't select team name for some report uh, sorry you, you, well, you should only see your own bugs anyway so it should be okay Yeah, I think if he really uses the HP internal um, graphs and dashboard and other functionality, that is not uh, really set up for the competition because our main focus uh, is to use the uh, defect management section of the HP Agile Manager. Uh, so yes, that might be true that it's not working, but you can um, extract your bugs in any case in an Excel or a CSV separated format and create your um, statistics or graphs um, that way. Okay, um, make when people log in to Agile Manager, um, is there a, a standard pass we emailed everybody? It's all the same. Come again, a standard password. 
Yeah. Um, no. Um, if, if I give you the username for manager, which I just did in the Hangout, can you text me the password for that user? Um, probably not. Let me but check. Basically, this, this user is complaining they can see everything, all the bugs. They can see them all. Yeah, just working on it. So hey, John Paul. Um, is John Paul on here? No. Okay. John Paul Varwick. Yeah. So it's 8.25 p.m. Berlin time. We have 35 minutes to the competition left. That is to file all your books and to um, turn in a test report. <clears throat> test report should be meaningful to a decision maker, which is probably Jason, um, about the software under test. So I would think you would be helping him make decisions about can we ship the software on Tuesday? And what are the key bugs that we need to ship the software on Tuesday? Or um, uh, what are the main areas of functionality that may be important that we didn't have time to cover? What are the risks? So here's what I covered. Here's what I didn't cover. And if you care about these things, you really you can't make a ship decision yet. So you know. If you gave me three more hours, I would do this. And if you gave me six more hours, I would do that. If you gave me 12 more hours, you would do that. Right? Then the decision maker can look at that pile of stuff and go, ah, I'm not really worried about any of that stuff. The stuff you did test is important stuff, so ship it. Right? That's the kind of thing that you can put in a bug report, uh, test report. What else could you put in a test report? Um, hmm. Is Pascal back now? Pascal? Well then, let's go to. Uh, is it is it is it Andre? I'm sorry, we've 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 never actually talked before this hangout. Yeah, hi, Andre. That's right. Yeah, um, Andre is yeah. from Romania, and um, um, we were just starting to talk, and then we got cut off by the beginning of the competition. So, what do you like to see? First, maybe introduce yourself, and then what do you like to see in a good test report, um, Andre? Yeah, hi. Um, so I'm a tester. I'm from Romania, part of Transylvania. It's called Cluj. Um, I work as a test architect here in Cluj. And yeah, I do see a lot of test reports. And mostly I look for the areas covered, risks raised, and perhaps a suggestion whether the overall quality regarding the overall quality of the application in test. Yeah, I think that's about it. Okay. What um, um, What's new and exciting in your neck of the woods? I know you, you mentioned the Romanian test conference. I don't know much about yeah, Romanian Test Conference is a pretty young event. It's held every year, and this year was its third edition. It hosts, usually it hosts like around 20 speakers and we uh, around 300 attendees. We have usually two days of event with tutorials, workshops, and presentations. I've seen a lot of people attending the this session of 
testing World Cup and which were also attending our event. So yeah, I think the event is growing from year to year and looking forward to see more people joining this. Well, I am interested, so if I can help in any way with um, you know, telling more people about the event or or, or anything like that, it's, it's, it's amazing how many test conferences are blowing up, especially in Eastern Europe right now. I was just at Nordic Testing Days last week. Yeah, I was there too. <laughs> yeah, was did, did we did we meet? Did I at least say hello? Yeah, uh, yeah. I think we kind of exchanged one or two words. Just saying. I'm sorry. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, we would like to share and make this event larger. And um, we usually host it in around May every year. So. Yeah, for 2015 we have huge plans which we plan to share it when we have something deliverable for it. Okay. So um, Matt, I'm just going to step in for a second. Sure. Um, now I don't want to give away this bug to other people, but. Damien, I don't know where this person posted this question. Somebody found a uh, person you posted about der, der, D E R K A C Z three. Yes, I'm very. It's not critical to me, but yes, I'm very interested in it. Okay. Time is it? It's it, okay. It's uh, just we just hit the. You've got half an hour left. Uh, can the user sale manipulate its reputation over other users' sale? I'm not quite sure what that means. Um, users shouldn't be able to interact with other other. Okay, salespeople, which is what you guys are logging in as, should not be able to interact with other salespeople's small business user account. Uh, Agile Manager, there's... In Agile Manager, there's no way to generate bug report for all bugs from the same team. Why is it so? Shouldn't they just see them in defect management? Come again, I just had to restart my Firefox. Question I is... I think they're looking to export a report for their report that they're submitting to oh, us. Oh, right, 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 right. Isn't there, isn't there a way to export your um, bugs as a, as a... Oh, yeah, sure. Um, in the defect management, I think it's under more or the actions, more actions. Let me look up uh, what yeah, the export is. Export. To Excel or CSV. Okay, hopefully that does it. Do you plan to support color contrast? I don't know what that means. Um, I'm not entirely sure your the question. Um, we do some minimal color blindness testing. Um, and so we, we test for three specific variants of color blindness. Thankfully, we have people with each of those color blindnesses in our office, as well as the software that I use to test for that. Um, we, we've, we've found things in the past. As far as I know, there isn't anything in the app currently. So that would actually be we have two colors that if you are colorblind look the same so you can't read the text because you're colorblind. 
can't read the text uh, or can't tell that something's important because we've color coded it to say that it's important, but it looks the same as the as something else on the screen, so you can't differentiate. Um, one of the things that we found in the past is there's a gentleman here that uh, has a color blindness, um, and he could tell that a certain piece of text has is a different color. He just wasn't able to tell what color it had changed to, partially because of the font we were using, the size of the font we were using, and the color we were using. So we were able to change one of the three, and he, his usability went up. Mm. Timeout is one hour. Um, I'll, I'll try to reply on the on the yeah. hangout. Supposed to be one hour of inactivity. Right, roughly one hour of inactivity. Ish. Yeah. Do account names need to be unique? Account names. No. Um let me just pull up a screen here. I'm trying to remember. There is something that needs to be unique, but I don't I don't remember if it's um, exposed to the user in this application. Is it just me or is it awesome that Simon Knight's icon is a horse from chess? Like that's cool. Um, so, um, who's, is 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 Patrick Prill still on? Patrick, are you Patrick, still on? Yes, yeah, so I'm just have to unmute. Sorry. No worries. No worries. So, so, how far how far are you from Bad Dirt Town, Germany? Germany. Yeah. Bad Durkheim. Bad Durkheim. A while. Because Hoyser Hotel is in Bad Durkheim. Ah, okay. Someday I'm going to be a conference <laughs> Any relations there? Yes. Yes. If you go to the ledger book, you can find where my grandfather's father signed the ledger book where he took his inheritance when he left uh, the old country for uh, the new world. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So, Matt. I'm waiting for your Miyagi door set up in your hotel hotel. We've been talking about it. It's, it hasn't worked out yet. I don't think it's going to work out unless I lose a lot of money and, and we have a conference with six people. But aside from that, I'm totally excited. Uh, Matt, so I quickly took a look at that create account screen. There is a required unique field, but we don't expose it on that screen. We force it to be unique. So, yes, they can use the exact same information repeatedly as much as they'd want in this testing session. Okay, great. Is it important if the search is not well realized, like displaying duplicate results? That sounds like a bug to me. Um, uh, okay. So, Lanou uh, asked um, from Team Silent Majority, what's the last login filter for the account name sorting? Um, it's sorting on the last log into the reputation intelligence product. That's that purple star icon. Um, if you haven't clicked on that for an application, it should say never in the last login. Um, if you haven't seen last login, you haven't been exploring thoroughly enough. Mm. Can we have a quick answer on all the page timeout, session timeout, etc. questions, or did we touch um, them before? I, 
they've been asked a few times. Um, it's supposed to be one hour of inactivity. Any interaction with any of the pages resets the session timeout that we store at our end. There's a cookie that's stored on their end with the foreign key to that session timeout that we store on our end. Thanks. So, so it's uh, 840 now. You've got 20 minutes to get your bug reports in. You probably should be shifting to test reports. Test reports tricky, take a strikingly large amount of time to write uh, under time pressure and conditions of uncertainty, which is what we are simulating here. Uh, hopefully, you know, your, your your adrenaline is running and this is the fun kind of uncertainty, not the... Not the um, Burnout, sweaty palm, sad, unhappy kind of uncertainty. Um, but uh, did, did we have Mike? Did, did someone from HP want to talk for a couple of minutes about Agile Manager, or are we not going to have time for that today? Um, sadly, Felix is only on his mobile reachable, and I think the integration of uh, the Hangout into mobile devices is not working properly. So uh, we tried it for the last uh, half an hour to get him in, uh, but that way is not working. And I think uh, internally they have uh, certain company policies that on regular machines uh, it's not uh, allowed. Yes, but uh, nevertheless I can uh, speak maybe a little bit uh, on behalf of them. So yeah, in the beginning of the... Uh, event of the Software Testing World Cup. Uh, we, of course, were looking for some tool uh, which can help us to set it up on this uh, global stage and scale. And yeah, HP was um, happy to help and support us in that way, since they have a cloud-based version of their um, former quality center um, ALM tool. So, and it was really uh, fitting the purposes we, as the organizers, uh, had in our mind. Just a simple tool, uh, less ramp up time to learn this tool, and uh, we didn't need much of the other sections they have, like like uh, product and release management, so it seems quite um, agile on the other aspects as well with the dashboard, but for our focus the uh, bug management was uh, sufficient, and it was uh, nearly 90% working out of the bag, box, uh, what we needed. I think the only customization we did was really uh, doing the application fields to keep the teams uh, separated. Yeah, and um, yeah, it was a beneficial situation, I suppose, because uh, like Europe, we have 250 teams, meaning maximum 1,000 players, and that for the other continents, up and down, more or less the same. Uh, so it was uh, good for them as well, and it worked quite uh, cool. And also from the support side, I'm really, really um, happy and grateful. So uh, it doesn't matter in which time zone we were having the event, being Beijing time or uh, Australia times, uh, always a uh, few HP guys were on standby to answer our questions, to reset passwords, uh, to uh, fix problems with the account of the teams. And yeah, and I really, really appreciate that. Yes. So that's the little promotion on that. Um, but yeah, I really feel happy with them. Uh, yeah, the, the reason this is a real competition is thanks to the folks at HP. I mean, that's 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 how we're getting the airfare there. And that's how we're getting the infrastructure to make this happen. And then uh, they've been massively helpful on that front. And yes, that as well. So I think our initial plan was really to do a virtual online competition and give them some... Oh, hello there. Pascal has still some great weather outside. <laughs> uh, Mike, I'm going to jump in here. There are some questions posted in the uh, Hangout chat that I want to answer. Uh, I'm going to start. They were posted in a bit of a funny order, so I'm going to... I've been thinking about them in a funny order, so I'm going to answer them in that order. Um, what during, what was the most difficult development phase for this application? 
Uh, actually, it was those grades, the letter grades that go along the side of the report. Um, getting those, uh, getting a good sampling for against the industry, the uh, averages for the various businesses, and then turning those into letter grades when you compare them against the uh, the industry average was difficult to get working both nicely for small businesses, medium businesses, and larger businesses, uh, and still have those letter grades mean something useful. Um, question five was, how big is our development team? It varies depending on how, how much work this particular product needs. Vendatha has a development team of 40 developers, um, and we currently have six testers, although we're looking to add another six testers. Um, and so any one time the sales tool, which is what you're testing, can have anywhere between six devs working on it and one dev working on it. Uh, it always has somebody working on it. Um, we use Scrum. Um, our testers are embedded onto the teams that they work with. Um, so as the primary tester for this application, I go to this uh, Scrum team stand up every morning. I go to their retros, their backlog estimations all of that. Um, the PO's desk is two offices over from mine, so I can talk to them anytime I want. I just walk over to their desk and talk to them. We use Google Hangouts a lot for this, though, um, either for the chat or for the or for video like we're doing now. Um, Agile management tool. Um, we, we're a Jira shop. Uh, it's not my favorite tool in the world, but it does everything we need it to and it actually has a really nice bug reporting uh, Chrome extension that we use quite extensively that takes screenshots and gathers uh, browser data for us. Um, why did we decide to store the session under the URL path but not the cookies? I don't actually know the answer to that question. Now, the developer would have made that decision at some time. Um, it might have been for expediency, and we haven't had a good reason to change it. How many users can simultaneously access the sales tool? Um, did we test it? Um, we've tested that we are transactionally safe for three or four users at, uh, connecting to the same account at the same time, all trying to edit and create accounts. It works. Beyond that, it's just a scaling issue because beyond that many users simultaneous, Google spins up new instances of our virtual machine that runs all of this, and so they're all independent. Um, so yes, we tested it, not, not super thoroughly, because most of it is Google infrastructure as opposed to us. Uh, what fu functionality do your, our users most use? That email report link. Uh, that's their favorite feature. They create an account edit it really quickly, and then email it out to customers. Uh, scrolling down. Somebody asked if they needed to do the report in Agile Manager. Uh, I believe the answer is no. No, just whatever you want. Email. Email plain text is probably not preferred, because we're going to have to extract those and put them somewhere. So you can email us a Word doc. An Excel file, a PowerPoint, uh, a PDF, any tool you want to generate a PDF, any tool you want to generate a Word doc, uh, RTF, prefer not ASCII text, um, whatever you want. Just the uh, a, a quick uh, hint from the last competition, the North American competition that I judged, it really helps if your team name is in your document title. <laughs> Prevents yeah. from going insane. <laughs> right. Yeah, so things, things, good things to put in there. Uh, team name, player names, email addresses, because then if there's a question, we can email you back. Today's date. Um, and, and um, um, yeah, then, then, then you can go on to, you know, what is Pascal doing? He's on his bike. Yeah, he's on his bicycle. That's awesome. I don't know if that's broadcasting, but Pascal Dufour, one of our judges, is on his bicycle riding through, I'm 
guessing that's Zwala in the Netherlands, but I'm not really sure. Thank you. The silent majority asks if there's a limit to the report length. Uh, well, unless you've been writing for three hours, you're unlikely to exceed the amount that we're willing to read. Um, although, please bear in mind, there are 250 teams. Um, I now need to go read. Anybody got a bug count for me yet? I haven't been able to log into Agile Manager today, so I don't know what the bug count's up to. We should be around 3,000 in total. Oh, that's not so bad. I was expecting there to be about 6,000. 3,000 bugs. Wow. I'm hoping there's, like, actually five bugs that every team has reported. So if you're really listening, like I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a hint right now. We've only got ten minutes left. There's only so much you can do. But um, um, we're not going to be able to judge all 3,000 bugs realistically. So what is the judge going to do? He's going to have to triage. They're going to have to triage our time. We're going to go on. We're going to sort most likely by criticality and look at the critical bugs. If those are badly written, then your bugs are bad. If they are well written, well, maybe we can keep looking. But but the, you covered the important things, right? So critical bugs, you're going to want to be careful to make sure they are reproducible and reasonable. Um, a bug like search doesn't work. How do I reproduce that? I, I, so I, if it's in fact true that clicking the search button causes a crash, you're fine. But if it's any more nuanced than that, we're probably going to have a problem. Because I'm going to type in hello, click search, see one result, and say, wait a minute, it works for me. Right? Um, so. There's a question about quantity of bugs versus quality of bugs. Um, well, I think this is... We're all professional testers here. Um, if you were testing one of your own products, what would you rather have? Uh, quality. Um, I, you can file, if you file 200 er, bugs about how my fonts render on different pages, I might get around to fixing it. If you file two really well written bugs about huge gaping uh, issues in my program, I'm going to fix them right away and I'm going to be thankful to you. Um, I believe uh, somebody said 3,000 bugs, half of what was expected, what about their quality? Um, I will put to you that I was expecting 3,000 bugs, uh, 6,000 bugs because there are 250 teams. Um, and I'm expecting you all to find the same five really easy bugs, and that's 20, that's an enormous amount of bugs filed right there because they're all duplicates. Um, I was on a diatribe there a second ago. Um, basically, the better the report of bugs are, the happier I'm going to be. Oh, I know what I was going to say. Um, in contest pass, um, the product owner has been able to give up bonus points for writing for, for you guys writing really good bugs. So if you write a really good bug that I'm really happy about because I can replicate it really well and it's really important to me, there are bonus points and they're mine to give away. Yep. And, and what we've done with other judges who are a little bit less engaged than Jason, Jason knows how we do everything. A lot of product owners just want to see the cream of the crop. So uh, historically, we've kind of, and I think we can still probably, maybe we can make a Google Doc or something for the judges to say, you know, here are the bugs we thought were really, really interesting. Because I sent those to TechSmith, first of all, that had material, tangible business value to them, right? Because it was a real product we were testing. And, and they, we found a security issue that made them actually change some of the company policies. Uh, and I can't say anything more than that. But... Um, <laughs> Um, but also that can really help us because the product owner can write back and say, ah, it's not really that big a deal. I don't, I don't see what the big deal is. And then that allows us to impact our score appropriately. Yeah. That's funny. Sorry, there's somebody somebody posted something funny on Google+. Plus that it's, it's also... <laughs> please bear in mind, the, the better the test reports that you guys write and the better bugs that you guys write, it makes... Uh, 
software testing uh, World Cup a more viable product for us as the organizing group, specifically Matt and Mike, to take to companies like mine and say, we'd like to use your product for an upcoming local. Here's the benefit to you out of it. Um, you got to you, let us use your product, pr help us out during the day of the competition by providing somebody to talk to the competitors, and out of it, we will set, we'll sick a thousand testers on your app for three hours. But don't worry, we will um, filter down the results so that you get something yep. useful out of it. Exactly. And I mean, the past experience of the North America and Oceania uh, event showed that the testing teams really found production by. For one instance, the Macintosh release was postponed for a few weeks. And the other, they had some security issues found. So it's really uh, productive for both sides. Yep. Um, so we've got five minutes left, folks. So you should be you should be editing your test reports at this point. You should be typing them up. Um, what's that email address? Test report at softwaretestingworldcup.com. Is that what they're supposed to do, Mike? No, uh, we change that as well. We live and learn. So it's test report uh, hyphen Europe at softwaretestingworldcup.com. But look in your newsletter you got today uh, from the STVC, um, and you also find it there again, exactly. Well, the uh, there is there's evidence that they are slowing down their testing. Uh, the maximum request rate that I had during the competition was just over 40 requests per second to the web server, and it's now down around 10 requests per second. So. I think people are starting to work on their reports. Yep. Test report dash Europe at software testing world cup dot com. Software testing world cup twenty fourteen. Um, somebody asked me, they weren't sure if I said Jira. Yes, I said Jira. Do we also use Confluence as a knowledge management system? No, we do not. Uh, if no, could you please? You don't? What, what, do you, you, you use social text? Do you, you use social text? No, we don't use social text. Oh! No. Um, this is a bit of a nuanced question. Uh, Jira is a really a, a fairly good tool for interacting with your technical staff, uh, interacting outside of your technical staff. I'm sorry if you work for Jira, but it sucks. Um, for uh, for interacting with non-technical staff and customers, we use a tool called Zendesk, which integrates with Jira just nicely. So, So uh, we have three minutes left. Uh, I've introduced most of the judges, but I think that Guna Petrov has been quiet, and Guna Petrova. And uh, I met Guna in Estonia last week. She's Latvian, and she came to Nordic Testing Days, and she was my coordinator for the, the tour tutorial we did, and she gave me a remarkably large amount of chocolate, which I greatly appreciated and never thanked her properly for. So, uh, uh, thanks for helping us today, Kuna. <laughs> uh, yeah, I do that. I tend to give people chocolate or candy. <laughs> that always works for me, by the way, unless I'm in Scotland, in which case, actually, <laughs> I was in Scotland before, the week before I was in, in, in Estonia, and they gave me a liter of Scotch whiskey, cast strength. Uh, as a, as a speaker's gift. Hmm. So that, that British Computer Society Scotland, they're okay. <laughs> tell, tell us about tell us about Guna. What's new and exciting in your neck of woods? What, what are you working on? Right now I'm still trying to get the rest from the Nordic days. 
<laughs> Helping out uh, uh, as a part of organizer team is actually extremely exhausting. If somebody thinks it's a pre uh, just walk on a beach, uh, uh, hell no. <laughs> but it's still loads of fun. You get to meet lots of cool people, and suddenly at least ten from the people from the Twitter you are following are up in your face with "I follow you." So that's kind of cool. So for now, for me is I did sign up to help here. So this is one thing I'm doing. Also, a little bit of a, perhaps there will be some something something we will do with the local test hub. Oh, the yeah, tech hub. So, but also with some testing twist in it. And other than that, rest up, build some strength. Uh, just uh, an ad, and there will be advertisement now. Uh, they are looking for volunteers. The the uh, application security testing conference. It will be in mid June in UK in Cambridge. They are looking for help. And they are not paying me to do this, sorry. <laughs> so in case there is somebody who is uh, willing to volunteer and have some strength in, in them to do so, unfortunately I won't be able to pull this off. So that's it. I like to test. I plan to test. So try to uh, please kill me if I stop testing. Well, you, I, can always, you can always be a critical thinker even if you happen to move on to a different role. Right. So uh, I did project management for a year, and it was was all right. I did some team uh, managing as well, but then then I get a chance to just test, and I'm really happy to just test. <laughs> so I know it's again. It sounds weird. What are your plans for the future? I don't know. To test? No, I think that's great. I think it's kind of weird that. Uh, it seems to me that we're running into two kinds of people, and it's okay. They're, the majority of testers, this is something they're going to do for a couple of years, probably, and they're going to move on to something else, and that's okay. That's probably 70% of testers. But there is a small number of testers who think, this, this is really what I want to do. I, I want to get good at it, and I'm willing to learn, to study, to research, to get involved, to get on, to get, you know, on social media, to build my reputation so I can keep keep doing this even as the world keeps changing. And um, that's not a lot of testers, but the ones that are, that's okay. That's, that's awesome. Like, you don't see many doctors that say, I want to go into management, right? They, they, they want to heal people. That's what, that's what they want to do. And I think that uh, testers that have that same attitude, that's cool. So thanks. Appreciate it. Of course, you can always come to the world competition in Germany in yeah, November. When is it, Mike? It's November 9th? Yes, I think so. It's in yeah. carnival time. And um, uh, of course, if you don't win, if you don't win today, and you, you should see some emails. I, I'm not. Uh, I don't have the emails, Mike. But um, have you have you logged in? Why, why don't you go ahead and log into the um, Test report email address. And see, uh, he says they're coming in. Okay, great. Um, uh, if you don't win today, you do get a second chance because we do have seven continents, but only six regional competitions. The the competition for Antarctica is going to be the day before Agile Testing Days. Uh, it's a Sunday in um, in in Potsdam, Germany. We have a little peer conference called Pops Lightning. And um, on November 9th, and that evening is going to be the competition, the wild card round, to represent Antarctica in the world, which is going to be on the 10th. And if you want to, in the morning of the 10th, um, I am doing a half-day tutorial on lean software testing, which um, I'm going to took the full-day version. No idea how we're going to get it into a half-day, but we'll see what we can do. And it's, it's 9 o'clock in Berlin, isn't it? Yes. So, I think uh, we should probably shut this down shortly. You should stop filing bugs. Get your, get your report in in the next 10 minutes, folks. It's really not fair to the ones that got the reports in on time to turn yours in late. So please, submit what you have. 
scores will we'll start to punish teams significantly when they start um, in a couple more minutes of not having their reports in. And I uh, should probably say goodbye. So, um, Andre, thank you for playing. Anything you want to say before you go? Well, only happy Friday for all. <laughs> you too. Uh, that's it. Thanks. It's Peter. a little bit later. It's a little bit later in Romania than Germany. Yeah, it's it? it's 10 p.m. actually. Okay. Well, you don't have. You probably don't have to work tomorrow. So. No, I not. <laughs> we have. Yeah, thanks. Uh, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, I also wanted to thank uh, Jason for having us and uh, giving his uh, SUT uh, a big uh, exposure to all the professional testers and uh, yeah, being a great product owner, uh, I think we uh, really gave them great and beneficial information. So let's see what they made uh, out of it. Yeah, yeah. It thanks it for the other judges and for you. Uh, to doing the uh, face communication here and for the judges, uh, the support in the background. Uh, I think when we started it um, and saw how many teams registered, we were really like, oh, oh, <laughs> that will be some logistic problem. Uh, but yeah, thanks all the volunteers to jump in and uh, help us and support the event. Yeah, the tools mostly scaled and we managed to answer a significant portion of the questions. And there was a lot of questions. But we, we got a lot of them answered. So, fantastic. Uh, of course, uh, one person who was on the on the line today but didn't speak much is a uh, Damien Sit Sit is Damien da Damien Sinodinos. Sinodinos, Sinodinos, right? Uh, uh, who you may know from the uh, U.S. competition. He was online for a while there. Uh, uh, Damien, thanks for playing. Hey, thank you for having me. Looking forward to reading through the reports and the bug reports. Yeah, that's gonna be that's gonna be work. Wow. Um, I'll try to be on Skype. I'll be on Skype probably this this afternoon. And, well, most of the Europeans are gonna go to sleep, but but I'll be on Skype later today, um, Eastern time and tomorrow, if we have people have questions, judges have questions, to sort of get this thing knocked out. I I have to talk to Mike. Maybe we'll send an email about how to like sign up. These are the teams that I'm judging, or whether we'll, how we're going to do that. Yeah, did yeah. You, did you assign people already? You might have assigned people. No, already. I will uh, finish it before Sunday um, because now I will see which of the register teams actually entered at least one oh. bug. Yeah. So, as a judge, you can't even really judge until you get that spreadsheet done, right? Yes. Okay, all right. And, uh, okay. So thanks, Damien. Uh, thank you, thank you, Guna. I look forward to, to collaborating with you uh, on the judging and getting this done. I will try my best. Uh, uh, you're so soft-spoken. You're so like, let me see what I can do. You, you do great. Thank you. Uh, thanks, thank you, uh, Jason, for the uh, software under test and for being such a great product owner. Not a problem, guys. It uh, was my pleasure to work with uh, Mike and Matt again on Software Testing World Cup. Um, I look forward to bringing this back um, uh, and maybe even some of your bug reports that are absolutely amazing. I'll be able to share with the testing team here at Vendasta so that they can uh, learn from you guys. <laughs> That's fantastic. It would be great. It would be great to sort of take some of the best written bug. So there's lots of things we could do with this. You know, one thing I'd like to do is is get some examples of extremely well written bug report. Same bug, moderately well written. Same bug, not well written. Same bug, terribly written. And then as an exercise, give it to a group of testers and say sort what makes them well written. That'd be fun. So fantastic. Um, I, we already said Mike is my my uh, collaborator in this. And this is not this is not his day job. Uh, he works for the company that organizes this, Diaz and Hilterscheid, but he has a day job as a trainer, and this is uh, an after hours activity. And Mike Mike, uh, uh, it's a lot of work, and and I know the, the you have the thanks of a grateful community. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. I heard there's another World Cup going on. 
I don't know what they are talking about, but... <laughs> <laughs> well, the ne Netherlands, their game started uh, eight minutes ago, so uh, I think I'm going to put that on the screen where your face is right now and start reading up. <laughs> yes, That's awesome. Awesome. There we go. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, um, and that leaves us with Patrick, who I've known over Twitter as just a smart guy who replies... <laughs> Uh, to, uh, comments to comments that make you think, make you think in, a respectful in a respectful way, way. which is really kind of rare. rare. In, in testing in circles, testing we have the we people, have people that, that make you think, you think that are not so respectful. Not so respectful. The people that are respectful, respectful don't really challenge, don't really challenge you. you. Not many people that go. So, thanks. thanks. It's great getting it's in right this competition. competition. And uh, I think that's it. Yeah. Uh, if you want to follow, can somebody mute? Somebody mute. Somebody needs to mute. Okay. If you want to follow the STC STWC twenty fourteen hashtag on Twitter, that's probably the best way to get updates about when the hecker. Excuse me. When are we going to get this thing judged? Um, it's a lot of work. We've got to balance a lot of things. We've got to not burn ourselves out, and then we have to get we have to line things up to start it all over again because we're we're, we're barely halfway done. We've got three yeah. more continents to judge after this. We've got to figure out what we're going to do about Asia. We've got to reschedule Asia. So and um, next Friday is Africa. Uh, yes, really. <laughs> yes. They're also going strong with uh, 100 plus teams, so um, positively surprised with, with Africa. Next Friday is Africa. Uh, we uh, 100 teams. Yes, and I'm on vacation, by the way. Um, um, I'm on a plane. Let's see, what, <laughs> let's see what time I land and what time the competition is. I think it's going to uh, work out. Yes. Uh, we'll, we'll figure that out on the back channel. For now, Europe is done. And uh, we'll be in touch. Thanks, everybody. See you, Matt. Thanks. Enjoy the weekend. Bye. Bye-bye.